Hey everybody, I am Keaton, this is Keep Catholic Season 5, Episode 25. This is my Q&A video, I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this video for weeks. Um, before we get into it, I uh, just want to say thank you to Epiphany for allowing me to come speak to the youth there um, about the Sagens of the Cross. If you want to book me to come speak, all you need to do is go to kid-catholic.com slash contact and email me from there, or you can email me straight up at kidcatholic1 at gmail.com. Also, how are you guys doing on what you've given up for Lent? I am doing well on YouTube. It's been harder than I thought, um, but I haven't watched a single YouTube video, um, and so I'm giving it up well. Um, so how, how are you guys doing with that? So hashtag ask KC is what, is what I asked you guys to hashtag it. I got a lot of questions um, from you guys. I may not be able to get to all of them. I'll try to get to as many as I can to answer as many as I can, but uh, let's see. Uh, from Celine Gonzalez, is it a sin to do martial arts? No. Okay. From Lucia Cruz Barita, um, you are in my prayers. Could you give my daughter some words of confidence? She's going into high school next year, and the temptations will be bigger and more often. Keep lighting the way to Christ with your uh, fire emoji, strong emoji. United in prayer. Well, thank you, Lucia. Um, I'm going into high school next year, too. Um, so I'd say temptations are going to be stronger, but I mean, I'm not going to talk for too long about this because I want to get to other questions. But the more we pray, the stronger we build a relationship with God, the closer we are to God, the uh, less temptations are going to be. So just pray more entering high school. I'm going to do that, too, because I'm entering high school next year, too. It's going to be scary, but but everybody else survived it, so we'll survive it, too. Okay, from James Grogan, who's a longtime supporter of mine, um, does God have a sense of humor? That's a good question. Um, he said that he looked in the Bible, and he doesn't see any indication of a sense of humor, but we have a sense of humor, and Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. I'd say, yeah, God has a sense of humor. I mean, uh, look, God created the blobfish, and the blobfish looks funny. So I'd say that's a sense of humor in and of itself. Definitely God has a sense of humor. Okay, hashtag ask KC. We have three questions here from SQ Red Sox. How do you prepare the topics and the t content of Kid Catholic videos? Um, how do I prepare? I do research on it. Um, some of it I already know from my catechism. My mom talks with me about it, who has a master's in theology. She also checks after every video to make sure everything I say is accurate. I do research on it. Some of it I already know from my Catholic catechism. Um, I also prepared for confirmation and received confirmation, so some of it I know already, too. Some of it I do have to research, though, especially the saints. Um, number two, will you take on uh, the namesake of a saint for your confirmation? If so, who? I did, and I took St. Croce. Um, I'm not going to explain too much as to why I did, but I explained it in my confirmation video, so you can check that out if you want to see. And third, what fruits came from your pilgrimages to Rome, Paris, and the Holy Land? Oh, that's a good question. Well, a lot. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but they really did hit me our Rome, Israel, the Holy Land. It was absolutely incredible to see where Jesus was crucified, where Jesus was buried. And then in Rome, to see where the Pope was, Vatican City, to actually experience the Mass in in St. Peter's Cathedral. It was absolutely incredible. So what fruits came from that, I'd say, A, the Holy Land. I'll never read the Bible the same again, knowing that I've been there, which is, I believe, a fruit in and of itself. But also, just a closer relationship with God, being all the all these places that I've read about, that I've heard about, actually being there is builds a closer closer relationship with God in and of itself. And I was wrong. There are four questions. The last one is last but not least: chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate or vanilla? Definitely chocolate. I mean, I feel like anybody who's a vanilla person is like, I, I prefer vanilla, but I'll eat chocolate too, because chocolate is just so good. Who can not be chocolate? Like, for real. Uh, Clark the Beast asks, do you go to a public school? Uh, as of right now, I'm homeschooled, but next year when I go to high school, I will be going to a private Catholic school. Okay, Keith Mayu Hammond, who's also a very long time supporter of my channel, he asked two questions. Um... Hashtag ask KC, what made you decide to dispose of your mullet and what do you miss the most about it? Uh, I just, I mean, none of my haircuts ask for long. 
My hair has been four different colors throughout my lifetime. My hair has been all different lengths. I, I just, I don't stick to the same thing for very long. And I thought it was just time for a change. I had, I had had the mullet for about a year. It's just time to move on. What I miss most about it is being able to do this. I didn't like the mullet would flow back. Next, hashtag ask KC, do you wear a scapular? Um, no, as of right now, I don't, but I have a scapular, and there's this thing, like, where you get enrolled in the scapular, and I'm still trying to do that, trying to find a priest to help me out with that. So, I have a scapular, going to wear a scapular, but I don't quite yet. Charlotte McKinley asks, how do you resist temptation from things in pop culture, TV shows that aren't necessarily the best, explicit music, etc.? That's a good question, and really what I talked about earlier, just praying to Jesus, building a closer relationship with God, is is resisting to, will help us to resist temptation. And I don't want my viewers to think that I'm some perfect saint who never sins, because it's like, how do you resist temptation? I try my best to resist temptation, but we all sin, so sometimes I don't, right? I'm not a perfect saint, and so it, it's hard for everybody, it's hard for me too, to resist temptation of pop culture, of modern society, and it can be hard, and sometimes I do fail to, because we all sin, myself included, but what makes it easier is building our relationship with God and really experiencing Him through the sacraments and especially through the liturgy at Mass. She also asked, can you do a Draw My Life? Um, that's a good question. Draw My Life, like, I've always sort of wanted to do one, but A, I'm only 13 years, so there's, like, not that much to my life. No, that sounded wrong. There's not a ton of story to my life to do a Draw My Life video. I mean, I guess I could, but it's 13 years, so. Um, and secondly, I can't draw, so if you know anyone who can draw, you can have them reach out to me, I guess. Sean Wu asked, have you gone to a Latin Mass? I have gone to a Latin Mass. It's great. It's a great Mass. My, my parish has a Latin Masses every week, so it's a very great Mass to be in. I don't go to it every single week because I don't understand what they're saying because it's Latin, but it is a very nice, awesome Mass to be in, knowing that that was like the original liturgy. Brad Shapizi, who is a fellow Catholic YouTuber, I really uh, suggest you check him out. Uh, he makes awesome Catholic videos. I got to meet up with him um, a few months ago. He asked, what drives you to evangelize when so many other young people do not? That's a very good question. Well, originally, this evangelization thing started out pretty accidental. Um, you know, I just started a YouTube channel in my room because my other YouTube channel wasn't working and I wanted to do something different. I really didn't think of it as evangelizing, but something just pushed me to do it every single week. And then I eventually realized that it was evangelization and why I want to do it is because with all this messed up stuff in society, I feel like the internet, even though it's used for such a bad thing, can be used for such a great thing and can be such a good evangelization tool. And I want to take advantage of that. You know, now it's so easy to evangelize, just record it. You can record a video and upload it or even just like tweet out a paragraph or something to get it, to get it out there. Where back then you had to travel around the entire world. So I want to take advantage of that as young as possible. Juliet Nakabugo, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name, asked, off topic, off topic here, kid Catholic, but how old are you exactly? Just curious, BTWs, I love your videos. Thank you, I am 13 years old, I'll be turning 14 in June. Another hashtag asked KC questions from Marcy HF, have you ever thought of writing and publishing a book? That's a great question. So I actually have, and I was like in the middle of working on it. Um, I was working on it. We we're talking to publishers and stuff, so I did, but it sort of just fell through. Um, I think I want to wait to write a book. I want to, you know, actually learn how to write sentences properly. I, you know, I want to get through high school and stuff like that before I actually begin writing a book. But I definitely do plan at some point in my evangelization. Not now. When I get older, I do plan on writing and publishing a theological book. All right. Well, there you go. Those were the hashtag ask KC questions. Thank you so much for sending in those questions. It's fun answering them. It's fun uh, getting to see what questions uh, you guys have. So, uh, now that the topic is done, do you guys know what it's time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! Now today's Saint of the Week is Saint Anthony of Padua. And actually, this is like the one video where there was absolutely no reason why I chose this Saint for Saint of the Week. It's just a popular Saint, and I can't remember doing it on this channel, so why not? 
So St. Anthony of Padua has a really, really cool story. Um, he knew from a young age that he wanted to devote his life to Christ. He joined the Franciscan order, changed his name to Anthony, and he was actually a really good teacher and speaker. Uh, he gave amazing homilies, amazing talks. He taught a lot, and he was absolutely incredible at, at it, and people absolutely loved it. Well, he used a special book to give these talks and to teach, and one day, somebody who wanted to leave the Franciscan order stole the book on his way out. Now, when St. Anthony of Padua realized that it was missing, he prayed to God to have it returned, and the prayer was heard. The thief returned the book, and St. Anthony of Padua had the book back. St. Anthony is the patron saint of lost articles. I use this saint a lot. You know, from a young age, I was taught a prayer uh, uh, St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony, St. Anthony, please come around. Something is lost that cannot be found whenever I would lose anything. St. Anthony of Padua is a great saint to pray uh, through anytime we lose something. To ask, to talk to, to ask him to pray uh, to God for you. Because again, we don't pray to the saints. And, we, and so the patron saint of lost articles. I use this saint a lot. Uh, a lot of us use this saint a lot. We, whenever we lose something, we can look to St. Anthony of Padua, and that's really awesome. He died at a young age of around 30, and uh, when his body was discovered, it was found completely corrupt, except for his tongue. It sounds a bit weird, but when you think about it, he was a great teacher he was a great speaker. His tongue was used to deliver great homilies and great and great talks uh, to others. So that's why it remained incorrupt. So thank you guys so much um, for watching. Uh, normally when I do season breaks, normally when I end a season, I take one week off before I start the next season. But we're not going to do that. We're going to hop straight into the next season uh, sh straight away. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video. Please click the red subscribe button down below and the bell next to it. That way you get notified when I come out with a new video. Also, check out all three of my social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The link to all three of those will be in the description and in the comments below. Like I said, let me know how you are doing on what you gave up for Lent, whether it be soda, watching YouTube, meat, red meat, whatever it may be. Uh, please let me know how you are doing with it. Also, like I said, if you want to book me to come speak, all you need to do is go to kid-catholic.com slash contact. Also, go to kidcatholic.com. Check out my website over there. We have awesome stuff over there. Uh, you can check out my videos. You can read uh, about me, about my life. There are photo gallery. There's a photo gallery of some of the photos of my talks. All of my videos are on there, every single one of them, so you can go check those out. Uh, you can check out details about my speaking engagement, some of the recent talks I've given. I have a video up there of one of my talks, about a 40-minute video of a talk that I gave to a grade school at a Catholic school. You can also contact me, like I said, from there, and you can order your very own Kid Catholic t-shirt, which is awesome. I don't know if I already said this, but please like the video, and if I already said it, then go ahead and like it twice. I don't, I don't think that's possible. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Tune in next week. Uh, thank you for the questions I got. It was super fun um, answering the questions in this video. This was Good Catholic Season 5, Episode 25. I'll see you all next week, and hi, Brio!